What's going on you guys, Justin from Makita Designs and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to take boring old rocker covers on your Holly Davidson and turn them into something that you could be certainly proud of. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so you're interested in engraving some rock covers or an engine cover or whatever the case may be. Okay, so first things first, you're going to need a rotary tool or some form of um, Dremel. Hopefully one with a flex shaft. Now this flex shaft, if you don't know what a flex shaft is, it's basically an extension to your Dremel, but it gives you the flexibility. Uh, pardon the pun, but it gives you flexibility of literally turning that bulky old tool into a large pen. and it. it really gives you the precision that you need to get into um, really tight spots on uh, engine casings and things like that so um, and it's really easy on the hand so once you've got that sort of ticked um, the next thing you want to do especially if you're working on um, engine casings or metals is some form of cutting burrs so the particular ones from Dremel if you have a look at the accessory guide they're donated by different colors so with the cutting burrs they're donated by blue or like a type of blue now have a look at those the ones we'll be using for this project is a 106 and a 107 those are ballpoint burrs and they have two different sizes 106 is slightly smaller than the 107 and we probably will use a 105 right at the end um, and you'll see why and I'll explain why and this is one of the things that is overlooked um, with a finished piece and it'll give you that little bit of a oomph right at the end okay um, one other top tip I can give you if you're engraving metals what you'll find is when you're engraving aluminiums or steels um, predominantly more aluminium because it's a softer material a lot of the material is because you're cutting at high speeds and heat is generated with your burr while it's cutting through the steel what happens is the aluminium blocks up your burr okay so what you want to do is get yourself some form of cut lube I'll put all the links down in the description below so you can have a look at that stuff um, which is like a wax and basically you're just waxing up lubing up your uh, your burr it gives a really beautiful cut and um, really just helps out and it prolongs the life of your burr which is an, a bonus especially when it comes to really hard materials you don't want to be going through 3,000 burrs um, before your piece is finished um, so yeah that really really helps out and you'll see the difference between a, a normal burr cutting without any lube and one that cuts with lube and obviously the amount of burrs that you use uh, which is a top tip okay so one question I get asked all the time is how do you transfer an image from a PC or your brain onto a piece like this now there are thousands of different ways of um, how to do this you can so the, the, the most simple way I can tell you how to do this is if you think of yourself if you're doing an engraving is very very similar to tattooing okay all you're doing is you know transferring an image um, onto a piece of material but just not flesh okay so the same concept applies so you can use transfer paper which I've done in this sort of instance um, that's very but what I will say to you is do not crap out on cheap transfer paper make sure you get a really really um, good set of transfer paper with really good ink so when you transfer that image that ink goes on there and it stays on there so a lot of the tattoo artists use really really nice uh, transfer paper that is really flexible and you can manipulate it in, in various different ways um, to get that image down onto the area it needs to go down and transfer that ink um, so that is a top tip for you guys and you can really get around certain you know those the nooks and crannies of your 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 motor okay um, so basically for this particular one um, all the line work has been done this to take it does take you a lot uh, a while to do this and what I'll say to you is that the design on any piece it takes you probably the same amount of time that it does to engrave something like this because you've got to make sure you've got to get it right you've got to make sure all the design flows it works make sure that the customer um, what they um, what vision they have is applied to the piece that you know they want you to engrave okay so in this particular instance this is what the customer wanted and we are going to be creating that so from that to that okay easily done 
okay? So as I mentioned, there's a thousand different ways. You just gotta be find out what works best for you. So you can basically uh, print out things on with a laser printer on transfer paper. You can uh, obviously use the transfer technique like the tattoo artist. You can hand draw things on here. It's, there are loads of different ways. Um, I do encourage people, especially when they come with my engraving courses, is that they need to, we, we always learn how to draw first and we do basic scroll work, scroll work designs and what that does, that helps them throughout the, the, the creative process. So when they come to things like this, they don't have to just sort of get rid of, of the entire background, they can actually add some scroll work into some of the, to the designs and really make it, you know, really beautiful. And scroll work always um, complements a loads of variety of different works. Yeah, I hear you. I do. We want to get straight into the action, right? We will. I just want to give you a couple more tips. I want to arm you with as many and as much information as I can to give you a, the best possible start in this art form, okay? So a lot of things that I didn't have, but I can pass gladly pass on to people who are inspired to do something. Right, so where do we start? This is a very good question. Where do we start with something like this? Now, my personal preference is to find something to ease myself into engraving, especially if you've got a very expensive set of rocker covers or engine covers, you don't really want to make a mistake because it can be very costly. Um, so find yourself a spot where you can just ease yourself in the engraving. It basically calms the nerves and it just gets you into a good rhythm and you can go from there. So um, I'm, I basically, with these rock covers, I've, I chose to start on the edge of the skulls, these little lines. And I just do all the little lines here and there and basically that eases me into a nice engraving rhythm. And from there, I'm full steam ahead and I'm literally I don't worry about anything else and um, if you do make a mistake what I find is if it's not bad or as bad as what you think this obviously comes with experience just stop what you're doing move on to some another part of the the engine case or whatever you're doing move on something else and carry on and it gives you the time and it calms you down to come back and repair that mistake because almost 99% of the mistakes can be repaired you just got to use that creativity. So without further ado, less babbling and let's get straight into the action. Once you get started, just get you find that little rhythm it really helps you, and it'll just keep you go, going. Um, so we've only done like sort of one, a quarter of it. So make sure you do all your line work first. Concentrate on that, but keep an eye on um, your artwork. Make sure you don't rub it off with your hands. So um, obviously you can see my hand moving around all the time, so that tends to rub things off. If it does, just keep an eye on it and just come back with your permanent mark and just touch it up. Um, so that's a very useful tip. Secondly, uh, you probably noticed I, I put a pillow down. This is an old pillow I commandeered. So get something that's nice and comfortable. You can get nice and elevated and you can use the edges of the pillow to get um, a different elevation from your actual rock cover or your engine case and just puts it in a nice comfortable position. You can actually rest on it and it gives you a nice sort of um, a resting point. You can really um, go precise with some of your lines. So um, look for like a cheap pillow or something like that that you can commandeer from the house. Hopefully the wife doesn't mind, but yeah, this one I commandeered. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do the rest of the line work and we can get into the background. <music> Thank you. 
Righty, so now that we've done all the line work on the top of the rocker cover, so all the skulls have been done, all the border lines, that's all been done. Pretty happy with those. Don't worry about them not being like super straight because we come back and we sort those out. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the slightly trickier parts, which is the sides. So what I do to tackle that is I have the Dremel Multivice. I use that because it has an oscillating head and it moves and I can manipulate it to exactly where I need it to be. Um, so I'm just going to attach this to the table quick uh, and let's get to cracking with the rest of the lines. Righty, now that you're onto this stage, you've done all the line work, which is great. Um, don't worry about if it's slightly untidy. It's just about getting those initial lines down. Um, we'll worry about fixing everything up um, a little bit later. So now that you've got everything done on here, you move on to doing some form of background. So in my case, I'm going to do stippling, which is basically in the engraver's term is lots of little dots. Okay, if you notice, they're really close together. So if you're going to engrave stippling, so you can either go one size burr bigger or one size smaller. It's totally up to you. It's your personal preference. Um, for this one, I'm going to go um, one up. So I'm going to go to a 107. So I've been doing all the outlines at 106, going up to 107 to match this one. So it looks obviously uniform. So 107, and basically when you do a dot, um, it's a lot of control with the... The Dremel. So you're basically what you're doing is just controlling it. And basically, all you're doing is creating a little divot, and uh, divot, and then st pull straight back up again. So you don't want to keep it down for too long because it goes really deep. So be very careful. Okay. Um, so when you're doing your your stipples, as soon as you do one dot, you've got to do a dot right next to it, and then a dot next to that one. So literally, all the edges are touching. That's the best possible way. Otherwise, if you space them out too much, then you start seeing you know gaps, and it just doesn't look really finished. Um, you can use a Dremel. There are other tools you can use. I mean, you can use, uh, I've actually used the Dremel engraver. If you've seen that one before. Um, basically it's used for like doing dog tags and writing and stuff. You can put, if you've got a, a decent enough steel, you can actually use that, which is quite cool. You can, and basically color in similar to like a, a pencil or a crayon. So, um, which is pretty handy. It gives a really totally different effect. So if you want to get uh, three different colors so you've got your polished side you've got a and two different tones you can actually create that so you can have one stippled effect you can have another sort of lighter stippled effect which creates loads of different shadings I'll I'll chuck a picture up so you can see what I mean but yeah so now is the test of endurance and patience so when I start doing the stippling I tend to go for all the borders first get that all done and what you got to remember when you're working with a um, a rotary um, tool, the the burr is spinning in a particular direction. Okay, so when it cuts and it makes a groove, it's going to leave a basically a line. Uh, when the light catches it, you'll be able to see it. So when you're doing your stipples, if you're doing in this direction, don't do it going down. Obviously, turn it and then going down that way. So what happens is, when you do that and you hold it up to the light, you can actually see the directions you've gone. So with this, if you look, you can't really see any directions I've gone, So which is very uniform. So you've got to kind of keep the same rhythm going. So there's no um, easy way to start. I just do the borders and then just start with all little bits, go between the skulls, go around the skulls, do all my borders, and then I just fill everything in. Um, so yeah, this is a time consuming process. But when the finished product is done, it looks so good. Okay, let's get into it.
they have guys all done um, hope you guys enjoyed that and find it very useful yeah it feels great to get obviously and complete them it is an incredibly rewarding um, art form to do so from start you know you've got that vision from your from your client to yourself and then you see that all the way through and you actually have your finished piece in front of you it's very 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 rewarding so yeah so we just to summarize then so we use the 106 just to do the the line works of all the the rocker covers and then we did the 107 uh, burr uh, to get rid of all the the background and create a stippling effect and we use a 105 right at the end just to tighten up all the lines so those are all ballpoint burrs and those are found on the Dremel website or if you have a Dremel accessory guide just have a look and you'll see the different sizes um, they're very useful um, but for your projects that you guys might undertake, your, you might select different sizes. But that's particularly what I use for this, and it's come out really nice. Nice finish on it. Um, so that, yeah. Yeah, so if you guys like the video, please hit that thumbs up. Please, um, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. Um, yeah, and I, you can obviously hear the pitter pat on the roof of my studio. So I am itching to get out of my truck and might go make a mess. So I will see you guys in the next one.